With the stigma of being boring, unrefined, and cheap point A to point B pieces of transportation, the Ford Fiesta looks to break that reputation by being a more fun alternative. This little European car came over shores to the states in the 2011 model year and since then it's been one of the best subcompact cars you can buy. So let's go ahead and check out this 2016 Ford Fiesta hatchback. Now the Fiesta was updated or refreshed just a few years ago and it featured updated styling as well as more features too. Now for the 2016 model year the biggest change is the new optional infotainment system called the SYNC 3 which replaces the My4 touch system. It is much more simple and easy to use over the My4 touch system however. In other news the SE trim level like how we have here is eligible with a black package and a sport body kit too while the base S now comes standard with remote keyless entry and an anti-theft alarm. Now here goes the key fob design for the vehicle. It's a basic little key fob here. But I wish it, I wish it was switchblade however, but you do have your remote keyless entry, your lock, unlock, your panic alarm, and then to release your trunk too. As far as overall styling of the Fiesta goes, I really do love the European flavored styling. It certainly looks unique and very distinctive, and I love the blue color on this Fiesta we do have here. Now it's the blue candy metallic exterior color. Certainly looks very unique and pops out a lot. And it does have a black cloth interior. Manual driver's seat adjustments too. Now stepping inside, the step in height is fairly low of course. And you're greeted with a pretty nicely trimmed cabin. Even for this pretty basic SE trim level. But overall I do think that the Focus needs a complete redesign now. It's getting a slightly dated. And what you're hearing there is a 1.6 liter inline 4 cylinder engine, full leather wrapped steering wheel. Coming to your transmission you have an optional 6 speed automatic, pretty standard stuff here. We do have a sport mode too, you do have manual shiftability. No rear view camera here however. Vehicles like the Honda Fit do offer a rear view camera standard. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the lights and then you have your hazards right here too. Automatic driver's side window. Let's go ahead and pop up the hood, check out the engine bay. You have a blind spot mirror on the side right here. Side turn signal indicators that are integrated onto the mirrors. 15 inch painted aluminum wheels. The Fiesta certainly offers nice curvaceous and European flavored styling. We have halogen headlights. Love the styling on the front end of the Fiesta. Certainly looks very sophisticated and it kind of looks like an Aston Martin. It takes a lot of styling cues off of the Focus as well as the Ford Fusion too. Now under the hood here we have the powertrain that you will pretty much find in all Fiestas. It's a 1.6 liter inline 4 cylinder that produces 120 horsepower at 6350 rpm and 112 pound feet of torque at 5000 rpm. It is front wheel drive and it does run on regular unleaded fuel. Your base transmission is going to be a 5 speed manual while this 6 speed automatic is optional. EPA estimates are okay. 27 in the city and 37 on the highway when you get the automatic and if you go for the 5 speed manual it goes to 28 in the city and 36 on the highway. For those who want more power out of the Fiesta you can get the Fiesta ST which offers a 1.6 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder. Now pricing for the Fiesta hatchback model starts at the S model which starts at $14,880. The SE, like how we have here, starts at $16,110, and then the 
titanium starts at $18,830 and then the sporty ST model starts at $21,460. Now the Fiesta can also be had in a sedan variant like how you see right here and many other vehicles in the subcompact car class have a hatchback and a sedan variant. Now competitors for the Fiesta you have the vehicles in the subcompact car class. This includes the likes of the Hyundai Accent, Kia Rio, the Nissan Versa, Toyota Yaris, Chevrolet Sonic, and the Honda Fit. Back here we have a rear window wiper with a rear window defroster, rear reflectors too, and a third brake light at the top. EPA estimates, like I said, are 27 city, 37 highway. Total vehicle price is $17,985. Of course, all of your basic power necessities from your power windows right here, power mirrors, and your power door locks are located up on the dash. And you have a nice soft touch armrest that's wrapped in cloth. Now the Ford Fiesta features a pretty nicely trimmed cabin with okay build quality and materials. Now up here the upper door panel is hard to touch plastic however the graining of the plastics are pretty nice they don't have a super scratchy feeling to them. Right here we have your armrest that's wrapped in cloth hard to touch on the mid door panel too. Um, up here it's a really nice softly padded material which is nice and then it runs throughout the whole entire dashboard. Um, down here hard to touch plastic um, build quality is pretty good. Not many of the interior trim and pieces creak a whole lot. It's definitely above average for the class. Overall, the Ford Fiesta has a pretty decent cabin, certainly above average. Now, coming to the steering wheel design, I think the steering wheel looks pretty dated at this point. They really do need to update the steering wheel a little bit, um, but it's okay. It gets the job done, you know. We have your steering wheel mounted audio controls, Bluetooth phone controls right here, and your voice recognition. Right here we also do have your set of your cruise control buttons. You also do have your intermittent win windshield wipers right there as well. Coming up here we have your manually dimming rearview mirror, map lights, sunglass container too. And then down here we have your AC controls. Pretty simple and easy to use, big knobs and buttons, fan speeds your different zones and your temperatures and then you have your rear window defroster button right there. Down here we also do have a little storage cubby, 12 volt power outlet and then you have your auxiliary input and your USB port. Dual cup holders are also right there and then your parking brake. Coming to the center console it's slightly padded. Uh, the center console storage is deep but it's not very wide Now coming to the gauges and the Fiesta, the gauges are pretty nice. Um, I love how they look very unique with the font, but we do have your tachometer right here and then your fuel gauge and then your speedometer too. And then right there it shows you your coolant temperature and then what gear you're in and then your odometer. Now as far as visibility goes in the Fiesta, visibility is okay. I like how they have this little window right here that helps a little bit. Uh, outward visibility through the front is okay through the windshield. And then rearward visibility uh, is a little bit compromised due to the C-pillar, but it's not too shabby inside of here. Overall visibility is okay. Now as far as seating comfort goes, the seats are pretty darn comfortable. Uh, provides a decent amount of side bolstering thigh support, can't complain about that either, and the seats do not feel too firm, they have a decent amount of plushness to them. However, the most comfortable seats in the subcompact car class to me it ha is certainly the Nissan Versa seats. The Versa seats are very, very plush and very comfortable, great for long road trips. But these seats aren't too shabby here. Now coming to your radio, right there, it's a basic AM. FM radio system, can't expect too much out of a subcompact vehicle. 
Um, your different media sources includes your auxiliary input and then your USB port with your iPod integration too. Um, this is not the most simple or easy to use radio interface in the business. I have seen way more simpler systems. Um, the controls on the dash right here looks very complicated and very busy looking and some people don't like that. Um, you also do have your Bluetooth phone connectivity. You can hook up your Bluetooth phone, have your contacts of course. And then there's your sound settings from your bass, middle, treble, fade, balance. And then many different settings you could change on the menu too. And then right here is also your volume knob. You have your audio settings, vehicle settings, clock settings, display settings. And then right here is your integrated dial pad, which kind of reminds me of Mercedes-Benz, like how they used to do. And then right here you also do have your power door lock switch, like I said, it's located up on the dash. But overall, fairly basic radio system. It also shows you your digital clock in the upper right hand corner too at all times. Now the best part about the Fiesta is certainly the way it drives. And the way it drives, it's very precise in its handling and you really feel for where this vehicle is trying to go. The Fiesta is also a very nimble vehicle too. And it's certainly a joy to drive, especially when compared to other vehicles in the class that have very numb and kind of plain steering, like the Toyota Yaris as well as the Nissan Versa. Now also, the 1.6 liter four-cylinder provides enough power. My biggest complaint is probably the six-speed automatic transmission kind of hesitates to shift sometimes. Um, but other than that, the 1.6 liter four-cylinder powertrain provides enough passing power. And the fuel efficiency can be a little bit better, however. I would have loved to see the Fiesta hit the 40 mile per gallon mark, but it's not too bad. But for those who want more power out of the Fiesta and want the best driver engagement and the best feedback, then you definitely want to go with the 1.6 liter four cylinder turbo that's found in the Fiesta ST. The Fiesta ST is certainly one of the hot, best hot hatches in its class. But overall driving the Fiesta is certainly the best part about the vehicle. Now, one of my biggest complaints about this interior is certainly its lack of interior space as well as not much storage space inside of here either. And it kind of feels like a typical subcompact vehicle of being very small and a lot of vehicles in the segment are getting bigger and bigger like the Nissan Versa and the Honda Fit. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the vehicle. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the car. Build quality and materials do follow through in the rear. Still hard touch plastic everywhere. But that's what you kind of expect in this segment. Now sitting back here, the Fiesta is one of the smallest vehicles in the class. If you're looking for the best space for the rear occupants, then you definitely want to go with the Nissan Versa as well as the Honda Fit. It's kind of cramped back here and I don't even have the driving position to where mine would be at. I'm about six foot. Um, you have a single cup holder. I'm actually pretty surprised about these dual map pockets right here. And then you also do have a 12 volt power outlet. As far as the seats themselves go, they're actually fairly comfortable, however. But not much leg room and the headroom can be quite tight back here too. And you have your map lights right there. All right. Now these rear seats can be folded down 60-40 split to maximize cargo space. But the cargo space for the hatchback model isn't too shabby. But then again, if you're looking for the best Go with the Nissan Versa Note or the Honda Fit. Full manual passenger seat. Glove box compartment kind of slams right down. 
So even though it doesn't have the best value or offers the most interior or cargo space or doesn't even have the best fuel efficiency, the 2016 Ford Fiesta is still an excellent choice for a subcompact vehicle, especially if you're looking for one with a little bit more than just the typical point A to point B transportation. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.